climate change is having a significant impact on people's livelihoods, on their businesses and on their aspirations for sustainable development. CDKN is working in 60 developing countries around the world and we are seeing lots of action on the ground around climate compatible development because of this reason. We may not have reached that ambitious global agreement yet, but we are convinced that actions like those that are described by CDKN leaders on this video will build the momentum we need. You're going to hear initiatives from India, Peru, from Uganda and Colombia, where people are already being helped, but in a climate compatible way. I feel very positive that it is possible to do both, that is reduce poverty that large number of people in India live in, at the same time address the climate uh, related issues. In fact, using climate compatible development to generate jobs for the poor people, increase their access to health, to education, to financial sector for example, and drinking water and sanitation. Uh, if you take uh, poor women in Gujarat, they are taking out loans from each other or their self-help group to buy a lantern which is solar power because um, it is cheaper, it's renewable. I think in the end, it should lead to ecosystem-based development, where development is not undermining the ecosystem, but is actually nourishing and uh, enhancing the ecosystem wherever that development is taking place. Climate change is affecting Peru in many ways. Uh, the most visible one is the glacier retreat, and most of them are going to be disappeared in the, the next 15 years. And that is affecting our water supply, and, and, the, and it also affects energy production because we generate energy a lot from hydroelectric that, that come from glaciers. CDKN is, is involved in the largest project for, for climate change planning and it's a unique way of, of developing policy because you are having a process in which you involve stakeholders that never, never thought about climate change. And now they are really an active part of, of the proposal and that's, that's amazing because you have a lot of private sector people from the ministries that never, never even thought about climate change and they are active, they are having an active role. In Uganda, there is no way you can talk about reducing poverty without addressing climate change because the people are relying on rain-fed agriculture for food, for income, as a livelihood. Definitely, climate change and and, and poverty have to go hand in hand. But addressing climate change is um, really quite a challenge because you have a mix of interests. You have business people and uh, private sector, they are, they, they, they are interested in profit. And uh, unless really you have them, they, their profits threatened or their businesses threatened, they, they, they wouldn't think otherwise. But the real optimism, optimism is about uh, building awareness among the population. If you have that critical mass that is quite aware of, uh, of what is befalling them, then the politicians will have no choice other than uh, going that way. So uh, the issue is about awareness and building that kind uh, of critical mass. We are doing exciting things. We're doing uh, an adaptation plan for Cartagena, which is the first city in Colombia to ever do an adaptation plan. We have seen that around 30% of the city will be flooded. And also there are situations where water is coming in because of, of flooded years. And you already see they, they don't have drainage systems, they don't have real channels to avoid water going in and out. They already have problems. And apart from that, they have other type of problems. They destroyed the mangroves. Um, the coral reefs around Cartagena are also endangered. So the ecological system of Cartagena is really endangered. So we have to rethink the city. We have to rethink the planning process of the city. We have to rethink where to build the new neighborhoods. We have to rethink how to build mangroves, how to, to see the ecological system working in Cartagena. 
And I think we have to look for the future of Colombia in terms of green growth and climate compatible development thinking together to build a new country, to give opportunities to the poor, to the rural communities, to drive competitiveness, and to assure that having all the opportunities, all the ecosystems, all the people that we have, we will drive a different type of economy, a different type of development that is more resilient, that is more green, and that looks for the Colombians of the future. These are, these are countries that are really getting on with the challenges ahead. But there's nothing better than hearing it straight from, from our partners directly. Uh, and uh, we've got a great team who do articulate the challenges ahead and the opportunities to rise to those challenges. We're a knowledge network. At the heart, we've got experiences from a very wide range of countries, geographies, uh, disciplines, experiences around, around the field of climate compatible development. We can offer learnings from that. We've built a whole program of learning. We produce policy documentation. We produce information in a variety of media. So whilst we can come and address the specific project in the specific context of a particular place or country, we can bring that comparative learning. And that's the power of the network that we bring. One day, uh, the, the, the climate resilient technology will be in, at, the, at the East stage uh, where we can use that without hampering our development process. That is what I believe. That's why, why don't we go in that kind of no regret strategy? Why don't we choose that kind of option which will, be, which will make our globe sustainable and we can also care our environment and ecosystems?